Let's do a deep dive into the fascinating history of South African Railways, a story that's intertwined with the nation's economic development, political struggles, and social transformation. South Africa's unique geography, with its vast interior separated from the coast by a mountainous encampment, made railway development a necessity. While oxen and horses played a role in early exploration, it was clear that a more efficient mode of transport was needed to unlock the country's rich resources. In 1860, the small coastal town of Durban witnessed a historic move, the first official train journey on South African soil. A locomotive amply named Natal chugged from Market Square to the harbour, marking the birth of the Natal Railway Company. The event was marked with a mixture of awe and amusement. George Russell, South Africa's first station master, described the train as a strange beast with a belly full of fire and vapor. This small line initially struggled due to poor construction and frequent rain interruptions, demonstrated the superiority of rail over oxen line. The Natal Railway Company's early lead instilled a sense of pride in the Natal. Meanwhile, down at the south, in the Cape Colony, railway progress was marred by delays and setbacks. The Cape Town to Wellington Line, started in 1858, faced challenges due to the mountainous terrain and incompetence of the initial contract. After much turmoil, and a Supreme Court action, the Cape Town Railway and Dock Company finally took charge of construction under William Broger, exemplary engineering standards were set, leading to the completion of the line to Wellington in 1863. The discovery of diamonds in Kimberley in 1869 spurred the need for efficient transport to the interior. This led to a crucial decision, adopting the 1065mm Cape gauge as the standard for South African railways. In 1874, the Cape Colony took over the private lines around Cape Town, giving birth to the CGR, the Cape Government Railways. The network expanded rapidly, reaching Kimberley in 1885 and pushing further into the interior. The discovery of gold in the Transvaal in 1886 injected a new wave of excitement and urgency into the railway development. President Paul Kruger of the South African Republic ZAR, envisioned an independent outlet to the sea. This led to the construction of the Pretoria to the Delagoa Bay Line, now known as Maputo by the Netherlands South African Railway Company, the NZASM, in 1887. The NZSM line, completed in 1895, involved remarkable engineering feats, including the construction of a dressed stone bridge over the Komati River and a tunnel to the Dragonsburg Mountains. Meanwhile, the CGR continued its northward expansion, fueled by Cecil John Rhodes' ambition for a Cape to Cairo railway. By the turn of the century, a national rail network was taking shape. The dawn of the 20th century brought political change and consolidation in South Africa. In 1910, the four South African colonies merged to form the Union of South Africa bringing with it the unification of the railway system under the South African Railways and Harbors, the SARNH. The initial years after unification were marked by political and economic turbulence. However, the SARNH embarked on a period of consolidation, expanding the rail network with branch lines 
particularly to support the agricultural sector. The war years tested the SARNH's capability. The organization contributed personnel to the war effort and its workshops were adapted for munitions production. Despite the challenges, the network continued to expand. This is just the beginning of our journey through South African railway history. In the next part, we'll explore the era of electrification, the impact of the World War II, and the emergence of iconic trains like the Blue Train. Stay tuned to part two. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss it. See you next time.